Ever wondered what keeps Luffy's rubber limbs snapping back? Why Devil Fruits rewrite reality, or how Sanji kick jets through the sky in blue flame? In the next few minutes we'll break down the real-world physics. Entropy elasticity, quantum genetics, vortical thrust, and the psionic field we call hockey, and reveal why plain seawater can shut it all down. Welcome to the science of One Piece. Monkey D. Luffy's body is the series archetype for a substance that is simultaneously organic, highly flexible, and almost loss-free with respect to energy, a living rubber. Real-world elastomers such as polyisoprene store mechanical energy by stretching molecular chains that are normally kinked and tangled. The chains uncoil when pulled, then recoil when tension is released. Luffy's Gomu Gomu no Mi, later revealed as the Hito Hito no Mi model Nika, seems to swap his usual collagen network for an exotic biopolymer whose glass transition temperature, the point where rubber becomes brittle, sits far below any climate he meets. Because that transition is lower than minus 50 degrees Celsius, the polymer stays springy from Drum Island snowstorms to Alabasta's 50 degree desert heat, so his limbs never snap in cold or droop in heat. Rubber's magic is entropy-driven elasticity. Stretching reduces molecular disorder, and disorder wants to rise again, so the chains whip back into place. Laboratory rubber can return about 96% of the energy you put in at moderate stretches. Luffy often stretches tenfold yet springs back without a hint of permanent set, hinting at an extremely dense web of crosslinks and a built-in repair trick that re-knits broken bonds on the fly. Under a microscope, we would likely see tiny chemical zippers that break under stress and close again as soon as the stress leaves. Sound waves travel through taut rubber much faster than through slack rubber. Luffy uses this in Gomu Gomu No Bullet. By drawing his arm tight first, he boosts its stiffness and shoots his fist like a railgun. Fans timing anime frames peg the fist at roughly 2 to 300 meters per second. A 40 kilogram arm whipping through a 3 meter windup stores the sort of energy per volume that, in textbook terms, equals half the product of stiffness and the square of the stretch. Crunching the numbers shows his stretched arm acts as stiff as carbon fiber. Yet when he relaxes, it becomes soft enough to soak up impacts that would shatter normal bone. Engineers call this behavior non-linear elasticity with an adaptive modulus, and chase it for body armor and soft robots. Gear second brings in blood hydraulics. Human arterial blood creeps along at about 30 centimeters per second. Luffy squeezes his springy vessels like a peristaltic pump so blood races many times faster. Extra blood flow floods muscles with oxygen and whisk away lactic acid, acting like a built-in heart-lung machine. The red steam that wafts off him is sweat that flashes into vapor when superheated. Oxygen-rich blood rushes near his skin, much like the warm plumes released by surfacing porpoises. He cannot keep this up long because even superhuman mitochondria can raise their chemical output only about tenfold before toxic byproducts build up. Gear third, the bone balloon relies on pressurized cavities making surrounding walls stiffer, the same trick used in inflatable space beams. By blowing air into the hollow shafts of his bones, he turns them into pre-stressed columns. In simple scale laws, bending resistance rises as the fourth power of the width, so making a bone ten times wider multiplies its stiffness ten thousand times. To stop the temporary megabones from buckling, he instantly hardens their outer coat, probably by cross-linking a chitin-like fiber mesh, gear, Fourth mixes air-filled bones, rubber muscles, and a black shell of armament hockey. See Chapter 5. Picture a pressure tank, a stretchy bladder wrapped in high-tension fibers, all under a skin that can turn matte black when hockey dents. The result bounces like a trampoline yet shrugs off bullets like titanium. Luffy's awakened Nika form takes the final step. He spreads rubber rules to the world around him. It is similar to lab plastics that change phase in an electric field, only grander. If his body creates a local field that lowers the energy cost for matter to behave like rubber, then stone, steel, and even lightning bend elastically in his presence. In physics jargon, he changes the local order parameter, making himself a walking singularity. No experiment on Earth can repeat that, but lasers in extreme fields do something faintly analogous when they make empty space act like a crystal. Devil fruits are quantum seeds that rewrite a user's biological rulebook, in real terms, they are nanoscale genome editors wrapped in sweet pulp. 
The moment you take a bite, the fruit's lineage factor, a mashup of DNA, epigenetic marks, mitochondrial tweaks, and quantum spin settings, spreads through your cells and retunes every machine inside you. Picture CRISPR delivered by a virus, but add a molecular factory and a quantum entangler all in one swallow. Three physical quirks stand out. First, broken bookkeeping of energy. Fruits seem to drag in order and energy from a hidden reservoir, call it the primal sea. So impossible bodies like a living sun or a man of pure light can exist without exploding. Earth becomes an open system when a devil power is active. Second, local symmetry break. Each fruit singles out one generator of nature's big symmetry. Zones break shape rules, paramecia change material rules, logia swap matter for energy, and mythicals bend odds themselves. Think of the fruit as a tiny Higgs field pinned to one body, granting new particles such as living flames their own masses and forces. Third, immortal blueprint. When a user dies, the fruit's code pops into a new fruit elsewhere. The sea's natural hum, about 8 hertz, may serve as the carrier wave. The death collapses one entangled state and forces the vacuum to grow a new, matching bud. Inside the seed, you would likely find a gene strand written in a 12-letter alphabet a cloud of quantum-locked enzymes that snip and paste chromosomes, a foam of crystals that harvest tiny vibrations for power, and a smell that no creature can resist, guaranteeing someone eats it. Only one fruit works per person because the rewrite tools hog every transcription factor in the cell. A second set would jam the works, like two operating systems racing for the same processor and crashing. Blackbeard's weird body may house three separate cores, each running its own code sandbox so the programs never collide. Paramecia, like Luffy's, keep the user's mass continuous but give odd shapes and chemistries. Logis dematerialize the user into smoke, light, or lava. That calls for monstrous amounts of energy, so Logius must tap the vacuum's zero-point reservoir, then guide the flow through channels that cancel deadly gamma rays via quantum interference. An awakening is a second-order phase shift. Stress pushes the ability's domain walls outward until fluctuations spread across neighborhoods. In plain words, the range of influence jumps from inside the skin to the surrounding world. Devil fruit users double as living superconductors. Their nerve impulses glide with no electrical loss. Their muscles fire near perfect efficiency, and their wounds knit quicker than telomeres shorten. They rarely gray early hinting at beefed-up telomerase and ultra-clean mitochondria. The saga's strangest rule says, The sea hates devil fruits, stripping users of power and buoyancy. Physics can shed light. 1. Conductive short circuit. Seawater holds roughly 35 grams of salt per liter, giving it a conductivity of about 5 siemens per meter. If a devil ability relies on bioelectric fields to hold new molecular shapes, plunging into salt water smothers those fields, just as a Faraday cage blocks radio, the field collapses, the user's body reverts to plain flesh and bone, and dense tissue sinks. Shocked sensors cut off from their guiding field send the body into flaccid paralysis, the effect sailors call sea stone sickness. 1. Osmotic Yank Sea stone, or karoseki, is an ultra-dense magnesium silicate laced with prism calcium. Its vibration spectrum mimics the signature of devil fruit energy. Cell receptors lock onto the stone instead of the body's own field, yanking vital ions out of neurons and causing paralysis similar to certain electrolyte disorders. 2. Quantum Collapse Water molecules twitch and twist, scrambling fragile quantum links. If devil powers lean on large-scale coherence, imagine a Bose-Einstein-type order across membranes, immersion forces those links to decohere. Sea stone, whose crystal lattice is phase-locked to the same quasi-particles, acts like a portable decoherence gun, so marines can shackle pirates without hauling swimming pools. 3. Sinking stone. Humans float because their lungs trap about 4 liters of air. A panicking devil fruit user exhales or can't coordinate breathing, loses that air pocket, and with tissue slightly heavier than water, drops like a rock. Fresh water, being a hundred times less conductive, sabotages the field more gently, so users can still paddle if they stay calm. Droplets, spray, or rain cover only patches of skin and leave small air pockets, so they rarely break the field everywhere at once. Water's huge heat capacity, about 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram for each degree, also robs flame-type logias of their insulated forms. A lava arm thrust into the sea would crust over in a heartbeat unless shielded by the user's field. 
exactly why Magma Master Akainu avoids deep dives. The Navy piles sea stone fragments onto cannonballs. When they burst, each shard creates a tiny null zone that cancels a target's power, just as the main shock hits. Sea stone nets work the same way. Slender fibers whose vibration band lines up with devil fruit frequencies trap the energy inside the mesh and bleed it off. Why doesn't Drizzle knock out powers? Physics hints the dampening field must wrap at least 80% of the body with a continuous saline film thicker than a few atoms. The so-called Debbie length, roughly 7 tenths of a nanometer. Loose droplets never meet that quota. In short, water, and even more sea stone, drains both supernatural tricks and plain muscle strength by collapsing the coherence those tricks need. Germaborn Vinsmoke. Sanji couples designer genetics with relentless training, earning two showcase moves, mid-air geppo and flaming kicks. Skywalk, riding self-made jets. Air is thin, just a bit over 1 kilogram per cubic meter, so a 75 kilogram person would have to shove downward a 50 cubic meter slab of air at 1 meter per second for every step, impossible for ordinary legs. Sanji solves this by stamping rapid fire kicks that pinch a packet of air under his shoe, raising its pressure several times higher than normal. Friction and maybe tiny bursts of burned hydrocarbon grease flip that packet into superheated steam and ionized plasma. When he snaps his foot away, the packet jets downward at roughly 200 meters per second. Each kick moves about 80 grams of air, six kicks per second, for a mean shove close to 100 newtons, still shy of levitation, but Sanji stacks boosts. Germa muscle fibers store four times more elastic energy than normal muscle. Like a kangaroo's tendon, the snapback of one kick loads energy for the next, trimming the metabolic bill. Air cushion resonance adds more. Each kick spins off a toroidal vortex, a smoke ring made of air. By timing the next kick to land on the low-pressure heart of that ring, Sanji steps on a solid patch of vacuum the vortex itself creates. Diable Jambe, setting a leg ablaze. Sanji whips his leg in a blur. A leg about 12 centimeters thick spun 40 times per second, puts the outer skin moving near 15 meters per second, which alone gives each kilogram of leg a bit more than 100 joules of kinetic energy, not nearly enough to glow red. The missing piece is tribo chemiluminescence. Whirling charges the nanoscale keratin in his boot sole, ripping electrons off dust crystals. When heel meets deck, those charges recombine and spark. The sparks ignite a thin smear of kairoseki oil, a non-depowering cousin of sea stone oil, harvested from sea king bile. The oil ignites at only 150 degrees, a threshold the sparks easily clear, wrapping his leg in fire. Why does his flesh not broil? Germa tweaks laid a ceramic polymer thermal derma lattice under his skin. The lattice spreads heat sideways and outward, so his core muscles stay under 42 degrees even while the surface flares past 800. Blood floods the zone with extra coolant, and his altered hemoglobin endures 60 degrees before wilting. Ifrit Jambe layers armament hockey and Lunarian genes onto the blaze. Lunarian mitochondria can shunt most of their electron flow into light rather than chemical storage, blasting extra photons and pushing flame color to blue, roughly 2,000 degrees. Microvalves in his skin squirt out quick-made ethane-like fuel from fat reserves, keeping a jet of fire alive. Combine blue flame with Skywalk and every kick is a pulse detonation rocket. Each burst adds about 400 newtons of shove, four times the gentle push of normal Skywalk, letting Sanji zig and hover as if on invisible thrusters. Hockey means ambition, yet in pseudophysics it is a mind-linked field, call it the Ha field, that permeates matter. Users manipulate different moments of that field, yielding three flavors. The observation Haki, Kenbun Shoku, grants extra senses and a glimpse ahead. Imagine every particle's quantum wave carries a phase marker for its likely future. Some brains can read subtle shifts in that phase. Neural scans would show the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex buzzing in lockstep at about 40 hertz with Hawfield oscillations. Masters such as Katakuri stretch their reach across tens of meters, turning the surroundings into a split-second time machine that stores the next few heartbeats of motion. The armament Haki, Buso Shoku, hardens body parts or weapons so they can smash Logia beings or deflect cannonballs. The user coats a surface with ordered Hawfield quanta, that line up electron spins in those atoms, creating a transient ferromagnet even in flesh. The aligned spins glue atoms together more tightly, giving the shell ceramic-like hardness while keeping mass low. When the user wills it outward, 
the shell becomes a thin plasma jet that hits without contact. Tests inside the story hint at pressures of several million pascals. The black color appears because the spin wave condensate swallows almost all visible light. The Conqueror's Haki, Hao Shoku, breaks opponents' neural coherence at range. A strong pulse of Haquanta drives vulnerable brains out of their balanced rhythms, and they faint much like patients hit by a magnetic pulse during epilepsy therapy. When two top wielders clash, their pulses collide. Regions where waves cancel dip below normal vacuum energy, polarizing air until it sparks into purple-black arcs. Because the energy comes from vacuum fluctuations, the flash reaches perhaps 10,000 degrees yet vanishes in an eye blink. The synergy bridges hockey and devil powers. Armament on rubber stiffens Luffy's springs without killing their bounce. On fire, it forms carbon-sheathed plasma lances. On magma, it plates the flow and crack-free armor. Observation hockey plus Skywalk gives Sanji microsecond timing to land each kick on a vortex. Conqueror coating, glimpsed in Luffy's Gear 5th, adds a second pressure shell on top of armament so blows land without touching skin at all. Haki grows through neural plasticity and stress hormones. Near-death spikes of noradrenaline jack up brain excitability. Repeated spikes train circuits to lock onto Hoffield rhythms for longer and wider bursts. Two years of time-skip training amounted to boot camp for those rhythms. Giant beasts and sea stone shackles forced Luffy's brain to sink under crushing load. Thanks for joining our deep dive into the wild science of One Piece. If you liked sailing these theoretical seas, drop a like, hit subscribe, and share your favorite straw hat science in the comments below. Until our next voyage, keep questioning, keep imagining, and stay adventurous.